time to continue on with some exciting AI stuff. Now we've got almost everything done except for the character actually attacking us. But before we do that, there's some fixing that we need to do. Um, I'm going to uh, go to the game scene here and turn gizmos on so that you can see what I mean. And I'm going to click on our shock trooper here. Now as you can see there's all the aspects that we've added attached to him and we have the round cylinder here that is the character controller which we've added in the first part of this AI series to make sure he doesn't fall through the floor and this is what makes him move around and also what takes damage when we shoot him. Now when we kill the actual character the character controller the you know, circular thing um, is still active and this um, you know could be very dangerous and I'll show you exactly why. Let me pick up the weapon here, reload, and I'm going to wait for him to get through the door here. And I'm going to shoot him again, right there. And so now the character has died, which is great, uh, and that works fine, but the character controller is still there, which causes me to be stuck in this room because I cannot go out of the door. The character controller is stopping me because of the collision on the character controller. So, first thing that we need to do before we actually continue on with this, uh, with this game is, um, you know, fix that. Now, fortunately, uh, it's not very difficult. But before we continue on, let me explain some simple things here. There are two scripts, or types of scripts, that we have with the AI. The first one is the zombie AI here, the, you know, uh, the pretty much the container of everything that has to do with the artificial intelligence and that's the main file that runs the AI however uh, we can also um, you know ping scripts from the behavior tree here and those are called actions and those are not the same in the same file um, so if I go to my downline here and look at AI then in there there's a folder called actions and these are all actions that can be called from behavior trees now we want to make sure that when we put files in here they are specific to our character uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the die one, which is, you know, take it from the shock trooper from the example files. And I'm going to duplicate that so that we can reuse it. All right, it just takes a minute here because my your computer has 20 gigs of RAM, but no solid state drives. So <laughs> there you go. Okay, so it's duplicated, but it gives us some errors because, you know, it, it, it says the shock trooper already exists and there's already a die function for that why do you need it again but we don't need it again so we're gonna rename it called zombie AI I'm sorry zombie die because our zombie needs to die here and we're gonna open that up takes a second and here it is now uh, this file uh, we don't really have to uh, to understand much uh, we're just gonna change some things here uh, this is still referring to the shock trooper so we're going to change that to zombie AI yep catching up perfect and then here as well wonderful and then we're not going to call it die but call it zombie die so that we have a unique name so that the behavior tree knows what to do now basically what this script does is the only important rule here is the AI dot die so it it talks to our main script on the AI the one that we've we've seen it's called zombie AI dot JS and then calls a die function um, so let's go back to unity and take a look here at our shock trooper scroll down and we see we have the zombie AI here which is what it's calling however if we open this script up there is no die function here currently it doesn't exist um, so now if we run that and call that function it's not gonna work so let's go back here and um, open the shock trooper AI file and if we scroll all the way down we see here a function called die and we're just gonna copy and paste this whole code copy this and then go back to our zombie die I'm sorry zombie AI dot JS and paste it I'm gonna save that so and then we need to go back to unity now does this make sense so far we've made an action inside of our action folder which means the behavior tree can talk to that action and that action talks back to our zombie AI okay so let's in our behavior tree select the tornado twins behave again and make sure that we actually call this action at the end of the death cycle so right click death click create and then actions and then a custom one which means a script and here it is I'm going to uh, rename that and say uh, 
call die class. You can give it whatever name you want, but uh, that's just explanatory to me. And we don't want this condition to repeat ever because it only needs to happen once. Now it asks us, what class do you want to call? Well, if we go back to our script here, you can see that uh, the zombie die is the name of the class. So that's what we've called it. So we need to copy that and paste it in here. Hold on. Importing. And paste and done. Okay, so let's run the game. See what happens. <laughs> Boom. And as you noticed, it was real quick, but the character disappeared completely, which also includes its character controller. Now that's nice, at least we can go through the door now if he dies in the doorpost. But it's not exactly what we want, it's a bit sudden, it's a bit abrupt. Uh, we'd rather have the character just lay there or turn it into a ragdoll or whatever. Um, but then have the only the character controller be removed. So that's pretty simple to do. Let's go back here to our zombie AI, which is the main AI file attached to the character. And as you can see, it does a couple things. Um, um, you can see it, it removes the object entirely if a variable hide when death when dead is called. This the variable does not exist in our script. Actually it does here var hide when dead. Um, and it's set to false so it never really gets there. Or we can um, you know uh, when it loops through the colliders of this object it turns them off. Which turns the entire character off which is not what we want. So instead, let's comment this out and type colliders dot enabled equals false. Now this just disables the colliders and not the whole character. See in this case it takes the game object and deactivates the whole character. We just want to deactivate the collider. Let's do that again for the second line here. Boom, I'm going to save that, whip back over to Unity, and I'm going to select the Shock Trooper here while turning gizmos on so we can see the character controller and to see what happens. Then we're going to run the game, pick up the weapons, and let's try this again. Here's the character, shot once, shot twice, dies. He's dead, but we can walk right through the character controller. Excellent. All right, so um, this is done, but it's not completely without errors. As you can see here in the bottom, there's something going on with a warning that is being flagged, and I'll explain why that is and how to solve it in the next video. But at least we can walk through the character right now. All right, follow me over to the next one.